I want to take you guys with me on like crazy travels, you know, all around the world, not just here, not just in India. We love the mountains for sure, but we love exploring all kinds of places. And hopefully if everything works out, man, if everything works out, yeah. Well, I guess everything did work out. So, here we are on our next big adventure. 60 days across the magnificent country of Thailand. From massive cities to tiny villages, from buzzing beach towns to remote tropical islands, from the mountains to the seas, we want to see it all. But before we experience the soul of Thailand, we must first feel its heartbeat. So, Maste Ji, or should I say Sawadi Krap, and welcome to the megapolis of Bangkok. Catch my wave, you better keep up. Catch my wave, you better keep up. From the very moment you land in Bangkok and ride that BTS from the airport towards the city, you see this gradual transition from the suburban part of the city to the slightly more urban areas and then finally into the heart of Bangkok's business district, which is nothing less than spectacular. And then when you take your first step outside onto the streets amongst all the buildings, you're immediately bombarded with the roaring sound of traffic, which echoes and bounces off anything concrete, as if to say, welcome to Bangkok. You cannot escape the smell of meat that is being grilled from sunrise to sunset, and you cannot unsee the exposed electric lines that power this megapolis of over 10 million people. Bangkok's energy is uncomparable to any other city that we've seen so far. But amongst all this organized chaos, there's calmness too. The calmness of the meandering Chao Phraya River. The peacefulness of the hundreds of temples and shrines that dot the city. The stillness of the canals and the serenity in the beautiful parks. But more than anything, it's the calm, respectful demeanor of the Thai people that instantly engulfs you. Krung Thep Mahanakon, the city of angels they call it. And it was right here in 2016 when Bharti and I decided to get married and took like a solemn resolve that we would build something together from ground up. At that time we had no idea what we were going to do, but we promised each other that we would come back here on our own terms when we had the means and explore this country the way we wanted to. When you say Bangkok or Thailand back home in India, Generally speaking, people have only one thing on their mind. But by the end of the series, we hope to change that for you. Okay, so when Bharti and I reach any new town, new village, new city, we like to go to the highest point possible. And uh, over here in Bangkok, it is this massive tower called Mahanakon. And uh, right now we are at 32 meters and uh, this is like a whole experience out here. And really, really excited. Let's see how high this goes up. Dude, that's fast. That's crazy fast. We are on the 75th floor and I don't think that took 30 seconds even. <laughs> I know, this was too quick. Oh man! That is something else. Like you, we're so used to seeing sprawling mountains and like mm. green landscapes and things like that. And those definitely take your breath away. But a cityscape like this... Shit. <laughs> beautiful sky runs. There are like two, three rainbows happening above the clouds over there. 
That's a lot of buildings, buddy. Yes, please. Another cover for shoes. All right, okay. give it to me. Thank you so much. Okay, it's ready? time to go stand on that glass tray. Go, 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 go. I'm so nervous. <gasps> Dude, <laughs> my heart is going top, 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 top right now. <laughs> Ronnie, you have to come do this right now. Come. Because your brain really is like, what is happening? What is happening? <laughs> Dude, that does feel weird. I'm wondering how much weight this can take on, like, you know? Right, I was what if, like, 50 people are on board and jumping up and down, like... Oh my god, look at that, look at the... Look at so the, the CPR yeah, happening over there. There's clouds, like the dark clouds, and there's like a full CPR moment, and then there's that's where the sun is shining. And then you have just like darkness. It's so oh, it's beautiful. We have to go because it's gonna start raining, so they're asking everyone to evacuate this level and we can still go down to the 75th floor and chill for a bit. So lightning strikes, yes. you dare. to the Jot Fair's uh, night market. It's open every evening from 5 p.m. up till midnight. And it's a really cute little bohemian market with like really nice uh, clothes stalls and food stalls. So you can do some shopping and some eating. It's a really nice chill vibe and a nice uh, relaxed way to end your evening. We have this huge mountain of pork ribs in like a spicy chili sauce. This is something that I actually watched on a Mark Means vlog a really long time ago. Meat, meat, meat. And the pork, the quality of pork is really good, huh? Really, really good. Maze, maze, maze. And a chunk. Epic. Bye-bye. Alright, so today we've come down to the Vath Fo temple complex. Uh, this temple complex houses the temple, or the very famous temple of the reclining Buddha. Uh, there's a lot of little, little temples and shrines in this entire area, so let's just go check it out. these temple guard figures that they have outside pretty much most temples. I know, the, these ones are really nice. These ones are just massive and so stunning. Check out these guys' hats. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. The stupa game out here is Dude, next on level. another level, yeah. Next level. Each thing is like a mosaic and it's not just flat, it's like 3D. Like so the flower petals are like coming out, they're not just embossed in flat like that. Yeah. Oh. Wow, beautiful. it's just absolutely stunning. They're huge. They're really big. <laughs> and the color combos, man. Color like combos the are perfect. Color combos are just so right. Thailand has just left us speechless so far. <laughs> okay. So now we are entering 
the temple of the reclining Buddha. And I'm actually very, very excited. Like the anticipation has built up quite a lot to see this temple. <laughs> no words only to describe these feelings. This is surreal. Since then I was a kid and one of the first reference images that I ever had of Thailand in my mind was this, this one, exact, I remember. the temple of the reclining Buddha. Like this is the first thing that my mind, like would come to my mind if someone mentioned Thailand. And it's quite a surreal experience today to actually see it see for it. real. Like uh, just feels a little bit dreamlike, a little enchanting, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and not just the statue, I think the yeah, entire the painting space, on the, pillars, the paintings that have been done. The windows, the oh, ceilings, like just the amount of detail everywhere is... Art is just mind-blowing. Too beautiful. It's just... Whoa. <laughs> you can feel that inside. You can feel the bass <laughs> vibrating yeah, inside. Yeah. Okay, so that was it for Wat Po. And now we are going to cross the river and get to another temple called Watarun. Yeah. Check it out. Oh my god. It's absolutely magnificent, isn't it? It's like such an iconic uh, temple, right? Like yeah. you look at it and you know this is Vataron, like. <laughs> it's crazy, it's like almost fractalish yeah. in its design. Very right? geometric, huh? It just pulls you in, like the more you stare at it, the more details you start observing. Mm, true. It's very beautiful. This is a bit of an Instagrammer's oh, paradise, definitely. don't you think? Definitely. Everyone is going hard. Because <laughs> the light also is really beautiful yeah, right now, good. right? And this spot is really photogenic, like... That it is. Greeting is called like why, 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 W A I, and like what I've read on different blog posts is that this is like a sign of respect, uh -huh. and you do it to like people who are older than you, people who are higher up than you in the social ranking, or like to monks. No, this is not like to everyone. So you don't greet everyone like this. Like you wouldn't greet someone who's young. These short little midday breaks felt like gifts sent from above. Because what you probably can't tell is the scorching heat that completely sucks the energy out of you. Especially when you're walking all day long exploring all the different temples in this old town area of Bangkok. 
And between each place we try and find a park with some shade to cool off, relax, eat some food, enjoy the greenery because walking out in that midday sun can really get uncomfortable if you're not used to it. In fact, we were both actually avoiding the malls for the first few days, but soon enough we realized that the only way to beat the heat is to get indoors. Uh, today, Bharti and I thought, you know, we just hang out in the malls because uh, uh, we are not really that mall kind of people, just generally speaking. But uh, Bangkok has some crazy, crazy mega malls, you know, and uh, these are not just malls; like they're literally like indoor cities. Uh, and it just makes sense for Bangkok because it's so hot outside, 35 degrees, you know, constantly. You have these massive big structures which are just all interconnected. You don't really need to get out in the sun at all. And you can enjoy everything out here, you know, from food to shopping to, to everything. Just say the word and it's there. So the two of us really cannot handle the heat and this is our saving grace when we go to really, really hot places. It's a Thai brand, it's a prickly heat powder and spray. So yeah, yeah this, this is, is the best. The shit. The shit. The shit. So we're at the food court at Central World right now and this place is freaking massive, yeah. So the variety of food that you get here is from all over Thailand and the really cool thing is that they also have a bunch of Michelin star street food stalls and the prices are like not so Michelin star, which is what makes it so awesome. Oh my god. Doesn't that make you want to cry with happiness? <laughs> it's not like like it's so many things happening, so many things but happening. But it's so balanced at the same time. So balanced right? and the texture. Right? The texture, so you got like the you gooey stuff. You would think the gooey thing would be a little yeah, like congeal, like you wouldn't want to no, eat no, no, it. No, no, no. So when he was pouring it, I was just like, oh shit, did I order the wrong thing? No, 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 but no, that no, first no. bite was just, oh, phenomenal. Amazing. I can't believe you get this kind of food in a bottle. <laughs> this life is like a breath. So right now we've come down to Siam Square and it's Pride Month uh, so there's a lot of uh, concerts and dance shows and all sorts of really fun things happening like the energy out here is like really palpable you know it's like young and buzzing and in fact uh, Thailand is almost on its way to legalize same-sex marriage which I think is an amazingly progressive thing uh, last week they legalized the recreational use of marijuana which is like kudos Thailand I think it's just uh, really exciting for Ronnie and I to be here actually during such a what do you what do you say like a revolutionary kind of moment you know like it's a very big deal and I'm so so happy to be a part of it in some small way. If you ask me about this whole Siam Square area, I mean it is electric man. Bangkok feels like it's in 2054 right now. And uh, you know for us especially, you know, Bharti and me, who's, we, we're from Manali, you know, we come from a village in the Himalayas and landing up straight out here, you know, in the middle of all of it is, it's quite jarring, you know, it's quite overbearing at first, but then Ah, oh, you just can't stop people watching, you know, you just can't stop seeing things. Everything is so new, everything is so fresh. Electric, dude. Electric is the word. And that was our first taste of Thailand. And I must say, even though we didn't speak the language and were just about beginning to understand the culture, we immediately felt this huge sense of connection and belonging to the city. There's a weird sense of freedom in the everydayness there. And you can feel that when you're aimlessly wandering around trying to make sense of it all while you're riding the subways during the rush hours. Uh, it was right there in the food that we were trying for the first time. It was in the tuk-tuks, the bike taxis, the streets, the buildings, the rivers, the temples, and most of all, in the people of Thailand. It was the kind of freedom that we had not felt in a while. And guess what? This was just the beginning. <laughs> 